All right, guys. This was supposed to be a routine restoration, but once we started actually playing around, I'm not happy with this box. So what we have here is a Varmint XL 250, okay? Now, originally, these are 6KV6s driving a pair of, like, 6LRs, 6LB, 6LS, something like that, 12-pin tube octal. But if you look, there's a fourth socket added. And you notice it kind of doesn't match. Well, we had to put a transformer in this thing. And I think that's why. Now, I don't think it was made to carry all four tubes. However, we were doing some Frankensteining to the drive section. And we, we were playing, playing around. And I, I took my new turbo I built. Peaks about two, two and a half. And I bypassed the driver tube. But we got like 450, 500 watts out of this thing. So now I put the original driver back in, and we Frankenstein it to the moon. I still can only see 250, 300. And then we had a mishap with another little item. I've tried to, we were tried to move this relay because I don't like open frame relays. We tried to put one on, you know, stand one up, put it in there. The board didn't like that at all. It kept staying keyed. So we had to put this guy. This is actually restored. <laughs> That's all we could do with it because... It doesn't like, this particular unit does not like having it standing up and off to the back like I do some of them. For the most part, this was an original box except for whoever Frankenstein that gig in. And look here, okay? See the, where the metal's bent upwards right here? Guys, if, if your tubes don't fit right, get different tubes. They're not the right tubes. There's a reason different manufacturers have different envelopes, okay? What should be in here, I think, are Sylvania's. Or something like an RCA with a narrow footprint on the bottom. It's always going to be an 8-pin octal. But some of these get narrower closer to the bottom section right here. You know, there's, they start narrowing from here down instead of from here down. So, that's, you know, they fit in this box. Well, well somebody bought tubes that didn't make right. And their solution was just to bend the freaking chassis. Okay, if you got to get your pliers out to make your tubes fit, you bought the wrong tubes. There's the lesson there. So, after all is said and done, I am now going to... I haven't even talked to the customer yet, so I'm going to call him in the morning. It's late. I've been playing with this thing all day. And I have an L bracket that has one of these 8-pin octals. And keeping in mind that this transformer alone drove these three tubes and gave us a good nice 400 watts, what I'm going to do is rewire this octal and add another over here and we're going to add another tube so what was supposed to be a three tube that somebody tried to turn into a four tube i'm now going to add a transformer and make it a five tube only instead of these little guys driving i'm going to put a pair of six lq6s in here to drive the other three that should give me about a nice 225 watts of peak however in order to do it now what am i always telling you guys you don't beef this up without beefing up the power supply so, yes, we have another transformer that will be added to the unit. This is an old Firebird 500 transformer. It's going to get mounted right to the back back here, right over the, the, the original. What killed his original transformer was trying to run too many tubes. I pulled this third tube out just a little while ago just to have some fun. And I got as much power out of the amp with these three. And that one pulled out the exact same amount of power. Now, I could pull one of these tubes and put this down. I know the socket works because if I pull this tube and put it in here and leave that one open, I get the same result. The transformer's not got enough current, and that it ended up getting the life sucked out of the original. So we're going to leave this one alone. It's only going to drive three tubes like it was designed for. But we're going to add a whole new 6LQ6 drive section to it. I'm probably You guys are probably going to send me some nasty emails over this, but I don't care. It's going to be cool as hell. So I'm going to call this poor guy in the morning and tell him it ain't going to cost him a dime, but I'm about to go in my parts file and Frankenstein the dog shit out of this amp because 250 watts out of a varmint, it's, it's just unholy. You can't have that. It's blasphemy. So I'm going to have to go ahead and do my thing. Um, but the, the lid looked really gnarly. We got the lid to look really beautiful, actually. Here's his lid. But I'm not... But I'm not happy with the performance. I, I know it's only a 250. 
Okay, so a lot of you old timers are going to go, well, it's only a dope day. Okay, well, yeah, we still should be getting 100, 150 watts of RMS. When I turn my slug meter off, I still see 100, 150 watts of RMS. I'm barely getting 75. So I'm not happy with it. Therefore, and I know what it is. I've done some research in the last couple hours. This is one of the later units. This is like damn near to the end. And the reason I was told that is because of the way this board is. But I can actually get the board out of this one and work on it. We did. So it, it, they got a little wiser. Somebody's replaced the fan, which is fine. Um, the lid he had on here when he came in had a big gnarly hole cut in the side. Um, we went into our lid stack and found him one that has just the original hole. And we put a nice free finish. Now, we, we don't have anybody around me that does anodizing that doesn't cost a million dollars. So that is the closest to blue anodize you're going to get out of a spray can, guys. Um, I wasn't going to pay to paint another lid, so we just we just doctored that one up, and I think it looks pretty damn good. Now, we're not going to do anything with the fan, though. We don't have to. All we're going to do is we're going to put a screen on the inside of that blue head lid over there in case we got any little critters running around like to stick their fingers and stuff, kids, grandkids, dogs, cats, wives, whatever. We're going to put a screen over that so nobody sticks their fingers in. That's a safety issue. Next thing we're going to do is some body work, and we're going to straighten out this freaking chassis where somebody bent it up. And we're going to put the right tube on well, That's going to have a 6LQ in it there. And a 6LQ will fit. I've got an RCA that's going to set right down in there nice and neat. And then right here, if you, matter of fact, I'll show you what I'm taking it out of. This is an old DC Astro, right? We, we use everything but the squeal around here, guys. You know that. We use everything. This little bracket right here houses an 8-pin octal socket. And it's in a very cool little DC circuit, which is not wired exactly the same as like your Firebird. So what I'm gonna do, <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this guy, I'm gonna put him in here. Now I have two eight eight pin octals. I'm gonna put a six LQ6 in each one of them. I'm gonna power those six LQ6s with another power supply. Okay, give the damn thing enough power to run. However, we like to do things a little different around here. Those driver tubes will not be running on AC filaments. I am going to convert them to DC. Why? Well, let's look at why. In the DC application, you'll notice that the only pins that are, that are being used are filament input. The rest of it's grounded. Well, that's because being a DC box this, and the filaments not being AC <coughs> requires no bias for this tube literally makes it a zero bias tube so i think we've already taken the ballast resistor right now the way they do it is this is a six volt tube what they do is they run 12 yeah, i have pulled it out there's a resistor that goes in there in this application with a single tube where you don't have a second tube to eat up the other six volts they have a real hardy resistor that stands up here and what that does is it makes the circuit think that there's another tube there we don't need that because we're going to have two tubes so what we're going to do is we're going to DC drive the filaments. All the high voltage is DC anyway. It doesn't matter. So we're basically going to have a, a Firebird 500 driver section on steroids hitting three 6 LF6s. And if I don't get 450, 500 watts out of this thing, I'm not going to be happy. But usually when my head itches the way it's itching right now, somebody gets a pretty cool box. So let's see what we can do. Seven threes, wash your hands, stay safe. All right, here we go. Now, I did not put all this in the amp yet, okay? We wanted to test it, make sure it works, which we finally did. We will be putting inside this varmint, if you looked in the last video, it had a uh, little 6K V6 driving. Now, originally, this amp was one little 6K V6 driving two 6LFs. Along the way, Somebody put another 6LF in the socket that was open. Well, that's fine. But the transformer wouldn't carry it back there. So we've, we've had to change that transformer. Now, in the midst of testing all this to get this thing to run right, um, we did high drive the unit running just those three tubes, the finals, off of its independent transformer. And in that configuration, this amplifier did awesome. We got 450, 500 peak watts out of it which out of 36 LF6s is about right. 
However, when we drive it with a regular driver tube, we have to remove one of the six LFs and we only get about 250 watts out of the box. Well, now, we're changing all that. When I hit this box with my turbo, just turn our turbo on, you hit anything high drive, about 200 watts a peak, this amp made 400 watts. Well, now our drive circuit is a independent amp. We basically added an amp to the amp. In an effort to not, you know, bear down this transformer, now this transformer only runs the original Varmin equipment and the final three tubes. We are adding another transformer for another set of high voltage, for another set of filament, for another set of bias, and we've put in all this feedback stuff down here because the 6LQ to get it to rock really hard. This is all the work we've done underneath down here now. Um, you see bias circuits in there. Um, our feedback comes off of this, that whole little rail we made down in there. And it is activated by the relay. So this is what we get now. This is just the driver tube. This is just the single 6LQ6 right there that's running. We are not running the other three tubes yet because I wanted to make sure this was going to run. So now we have a 100 watt slug in here and I have three prescalers. There's 100, 250, and 500. We are on the 500 watt scale which means that's 500, that's 200. This single tube now uh, is going to be running 225 watts into the three finals. And when it does it, it's not going to draw off this transformer. It's going to have its own independent mode. This is why we did it this way. For now, we know this works. Now I can condense all this, put it inside the top of the amp. And then what we're going to do is, is right now we just have this jumper running from our output over to the watt meter. So we've got no receive. We're just checking its output on the audio. Audio. Let's go to the 100 watts setting, just so you know what I'm talking about. Here's 100 watts. Uh, 100 watts can't handle it. We gotta go to the 500 watt scale. Uh, we're gonna hit those three 6LF6s with 200 peak watts. Now, with the most we could get out of this box before with the small tube and stressing that transformer was about 250 watts. We're getting almost that with the driver now. So, once I get this wired into those three tubes, this transformer mounted in the back, a new high voltage circuit mounted up top inside there. All this is going to be nice and neat. He's now going to have a single tuner on the front for his drive. And we're going to be rocking all that swing uh, into those three tubes. So this little 250 shit is out the window now. So now it's time to do the hard work. Now we're going to do a test run of running this into this. And we're going to see what happens. So our driver works though. We now have a single 6LQ6 driving three 6LF6s. And we are not taxing any more transformers because now this transformer is only responsible for the three final outputs. We did a current draw on it. It's not, it's, not, it's not bearing down. It's not running out of current. The energy is actually staying at 75% plus. So we're good with that transformer just running these three. But as soon as we stick that driver tube in there and try to use it off the same transformer, this thing crashes like a dog. Okay, this is one of the later ones. It is not made, it's made to be 250 watts. But anybody that has three 6LF test six tubes in their box will tell you, nah, that's a little light. So let's see what happens now. Now we've got, we're going to leave it wired up like this. However, I'm going to take a piece of RG316. We're going to go from the output tank now on our new tuner, on our new input tuner, drive tuner. And we're going to drive that 200 watts in the middle of three and see what this bad fellow makes. Let's watch the show. All right, we got our hybrid Barman 250 slash Firebird 500 driver hybrid mess put together. Um, we had a lot of problems with this amp if you watched the last couple of videos. Um, it used to have a 6K V6 originally driving only two 6LF6s. And like in all varmints, there was a spot for the extra 6LF, but not the transformer to supply it. So somebody put the socket in thus killing the original transformer. Um, after a lot of this and that and this and that, we decided just to go ahead and Frankenstein the drive section because it, that little tube wasn't, wasn't getting it. We were getting two, two and a quarter. Um, so what we did was 
put an independent power supply in so that we don't have to draw off this transformer anymore. This transformer is sufficient for these three final output tubes, okay? For the three 6LFs. It's, it's, it's plenty for that. But now you'll notice here is a 6LQ. Now, not very often do you see a 6LQ in an environment with 6LFs. And to pull this off, we had to add a whole separate transformer, a whole isolated power supply. So this thing is dual bias, dual high voltage packs, dual filament supplies. Um, we did change his tuner to a Firebird 500 driver style, like you'd see inside there. Um, the feedback switching circuits all down in here and automatic. And then you've got all this under the tubes. We had to wind that little coil. We had to add our whole bias circuit right here. We had to put, you'll see those green resistors with the, with the wraps around. Those are parasitic chokes. Um, I guess mixing 6LQs and 6LFs, that, that platform, the two really don't get along or this amp had a lot more problems than I thought it did. So we just ended up going through the whole freaking thing. Um, for the most part, it's all new caps in the original amplifier section. We've got some new caps down here. Um, we got the new cap bank for just the driver tube over here. This one is a full wave bridge off the original transformer. This one's a doubler off of a little transformer we had sitting in the corner. So what's coming out of here is we got, uh, I think it's like three, 400 volts of high voltage AC, 6.3 of filament, 12 point something. That's just an extra winding. It could be for like two tubes or a 12 volt tube, whatever. Um, what we did was we put the filaments straight to the six volts on the tube. And then we doubled the high voltage. We put it through a doubler. So we've actually got like eight 850 volts on top of that single 6LQ6 being driven by its own cat pack. And then underneath is all the bias and, and, and everything that had to be added. So our, 100, our, our 12 volts on here just ended up being, ended up going to our bias and we made our bias up here. The 6 volts went to the filament on the tube, high voltage with the high voltage. So now that it works, and let's get a shot of it working. Now before, we did have this, just this driver tube doing 175 well, peak watts. That's that's a, that's way high for a six LQ six, okay. And we we certainly wasn't gonna let drive the other three tubes that way. So, what we ended up with was backing down the bias and the high voltage a little bit on the six LQ six. Um, we did have to add these parasitic chokes to get some hum out, and we choked the input of the driver tube and the output of the driver tube. So it's parasitically choked on both ends. Um, that's pretty much it. Now we gotta find something to do with because we had to remove a tuner. That's because the single, the, the single tuner and a Firebird, that's all they use. Is a, I think it's a 15, to, I forget what it is. I want to say 30, 60 p, PF. Common air variable you'll see in every 6LQ6 box. Right there with seven turns. You hit the sixth turn, you're done. Um, so it is. Now, here's our power. We are on, we got a 100 watt slug in. We are on the 500 watt scale, okay? We have a prescaler in the sand, or in this meter. There's 100 watts, 250, 500. So 500 is all the way up here, 400 right there, 3, 2, and so on. So we're going to turn our carrier all the way down. The amp is on. It's a nice 10, 15 watt carrier. It's down here pretty low. Now let's give it some audio. Audio. Uh, ah, uh, ooh. 350, 375 watts. Um, right out of the tubes. Now, I am not going to rewire the Super Mod. There's no point in it. This thing keys so low if you wanted to. And he's going to have to use his, you know, like we are. We have our turbo board shut off. And we're just burying the dead key here. So, it came out. It's working. All the hums are gone. Um, and just so you know, this particular amp is going to... This gentleman right here. You might want to check out a page on our website, Paul Erickson. 
has decided to run for, I believe it's South Carolina. I think it's South Carolina State Senate. Uh, I have to read the thing up there. I think that's where he's at. But forgive me, Paul. I, I didn't read this before we did the, the, the video. We're going to put a page up on our website with a link where you can uh, help him out with funds. Or if you live in the state where he's at, go vote for the man. Um, he's tired of seeing what we're seeing. And quite frankly, I wish somebody like him were in our state and get rid of some of our assholes we got running this place. So this gentleman right here is who this belongs to. <laughs> Ain't too many times I get a, a, a guy running for state senator send me his amp say, here, Frankenstein. So, but that's what we did. And now the hard part, now, now it's the easy part. Hard part's done. The amp works. sounds good. It's kicking ass on power. 375, 400 is a hell of a lot better than 200 any day of the week. Um, the tubes don't cherry. The tubes don't get hot. Um, everything's loafing right now. When you've got three six LFs cracking 400 watts, three 400 watts, that's loafing. Um, and as you can see, we've been at our Firebird 500 schematic. This whole section here, if you can see my mouse going around here, this whole section here whoop, is what we stabbed in here with its own power supply. So now next we're going to mount all the goods inside, get all the wires ran, tied down, make it a single piece unit because right now we got the... This transformer is plugged in over here. Uh, nothing's wired. So right now, just the functionality parts are hooked up. Um, and it is more than functional. So here we go. Um, we're going to snap a few photos. We're going to get these three videos in and, and load it up. in and, and load it up and uh, probably tomorrow we'll get, get you guys a final video of this thing all polished up new lid put together in one piece doing its thing so paul there you go buddy i promise you it was going to be better i'd say it's freaking better all new all good hell, hell I, we basically guys we put an amp in an amp we put a driver section out of one amp into the final section of another amp and this is what it came out to be it's not a barn 250 no more um, varmints typically crack way more than they say on the front. This one was barely cracking what it was supposed to. And that's because it's got, if you look in here, you can see the transformer for this particular device. It's not a very big transformer. You know, I mean, usually these things tower, like, up here. So what we're going to do is the other transformer is going to mount right here. Other cat banks going to mount right up in here by the fan. And then we're going to bring everything down underneath. Whoop! get it wired up like so they'll all be in one piece ran off the one power switch um i may jig his bias and make it do a high low thing i don't know yet but um at, at best right now it's a kick-ass low drive amp with plenty of freaking audio he's gonna have to really watch his uh he's gonna have to really watch his audio going into this thing because it will splatter if he's not careful so now it's time to put it all in one box Paul, it's all for you, buddy. Anybody who's, uh, let me look here. Let me make sure I've got it. Try. Yes, Mr. Erickson is South Carolina. So if you're in South Carolina, when it comes time to vote, go make a change. If you're not in South Carolina and you got a little bit of money, help this guy out. So he can get in there and maybe do something. You know, it's all got to start somewhere, guys. So we're, in, you know, we, we don't live in that state, but, and not just because he's my customer, because I've talked to him many, many, many times on the phone. He's a very intelligent, conservative man. Um, he's not, he hasn't, you know, a lot of guys would have been impatient and losing their mind about now. We did go ahead and finish this one ahead of the DAC 10 with the 3500Z. We're waiting for a couple parts to get here that we didn't anticipate. So we decided to get this one thrown together for him. So we're going to put the little transformer in, the cat pack in, rewire everything, get the new lid on it, and off she goes. Um, you can look at our website. Um, later on today, there will be a page uh, for Paul with any links that, that, that you will need to help him in his cause. And in the meantime, this is what we did to help his cause. We gave him some freaking audio. A whole lot of it, too. All right, guys. Next one you see to be all together looking like a brand new amp. Seven threes. Wash your hands. Paul, good luck. We wish you the best. Seven threes.